Welcome back to Minor League Matters. I'm Ken Lammers, and this is our first podcast of the year about unaffiliated baseball. So, let's get cracking. Let's start talking about uh, minor league baseball, the unaffiliated teams, unaffiliated leagues. Uh, Pacific Association of Professional Baseball Clubs, of course, none of these leagues have started yet, but the Pacific Association, it's big uh, news for the year so far preseason is that one of its teams has shut down. That's the Martinez Clippers. Uh, Apparently, the owner of the Martinez Clippers has been charged by the federal government with fraud, uh, claiming that he was in some sort of Ponzi scheme. And as well, he hadn't been paying his rent, so the uh, Clippers uh, Pacific Association tried to find uh, a new owner, somebody who could actually keep the team going, but couldn't get it done in time. So there's no Clippers this year. Maybe next year. We'll see. The Empire Professional Baseball League. Uh, This is... uh, you know, there's only really one big bit of news for that is that uh, the Plattsburgh team has renamed itself. It is now going to be called the Plattsburgh Thunderbirds with a, uh, a picture of a P, uh, a P with some sort of uh, jet plane behind it. So it's not a bad logo, uh, but uh, I didn't catch it earlier when I was doing all the new logos. I don't know if they'd announced it at that point, but uh that's their big news. Uh, they seem to be the only league out there whom I care about that has not put up their schedule yet because I've been trying to see if I can plan a Northeastern vacation this year going to various minor league teams. And until they get theirs put together, I can't figure out whether it'll work. Uh, but uh, if all else fails, I've still got the one that will take me to Wisconsin and uh, that would be pretty cool. Uh, We'll see. The Pecos League. Uh, Pecos League is, uh, unfortunately, the Osos are gone. I think maybe they were just intended to be a one-year team. But in the the California area where the Pecos League is actually expanding, and I imagine it's doing pretty well because it's inherited some some, uh, stadiums that were, you know, advanced a stadiums before so they're probably good stadiums and it seems to be moving into california full force and doing really well at it uh although pecos league never gives its uh as best i can tell the pecos league never gives its its attendance figures but uh they now have another team in california the wasco reserves the wasco reserves have a uh, (laughs) a purple light blue and white color scheme and their their uh, their symbol is a duck, a purple duck with a blue bill and a, a white scar across its face that is the same as the stitching on a baseball. Frontier League. Well, the biggest news in the Frontier League this year is they're going to be two teams short. The Traverse City Beach Bums and the Normal Corn Belters are gone. Uh, both those apparently decided, heck, we'll just do it with a uh, college team where we don't have to pay anybody. You know, uh, it's a shame. I really think that the Frontier League has, for uh, for a minor league of this sort, has, has, has pretty well bloomed into something halfway decent. Uh, it's a shame to see them retract two fewer teams i'd like to see him pick up some more and and actually be you know have six in each division or even up to eight in each division Uh, but uh hopefully they won't expand too quickly and kill themselves of course we'll see Uh, it is a shame to lose the corn belters and the beach bums can-am league the uh big information for the can-am league this year probably the biggest information over the summer is that they have two international opponents that are scheduled to come in and play for a couple months against all their teams there's going to be a team from cuba and the (laughs) chicago island league plus team so they're going to have teams from overseas come in and play 
uh, there must be more money. The Can Am League must have more money than than uh, you would expect with a team that's only really got six teams, or a league that's only got six teams, to have uh, teams come from overseas to play. The American Association of Independent Baseball, the American Association, uh, their big news over the summer is the Milkmen. Uh, that's their new team in Milwaukee. American Association is slowly growing. Uh, they put Chicago Dogs in place last year. This year, they're putting the Milkmen in Milwaukee, although the Milkmen are pretty much a replacement. They did lose Wichita Wingnuts. Um, kind of a shame. I thought their their uh, logo was kind of cool. Uh, and, of course, the American Association has the most popular team in minor league baseball. That's a independent minor league baseball with the St. Paul Saints. So... Yeah, they also have some that have pretty low attendance. I think the Rail Riders are one of the lowest in uh, independent baseball. But anyway, they're uh, they're doing pretty well as a league, and it's good to see another team in there. Uh, wouldn't be bad to see one or two more along the way, but that's the future. The Atlantic League. Well, there are two big things that have happened in the Atlantic League this year uh, before the season. They have agreed to start a new team in North Carolina. It should start up this year, the High Point Rockers. Uh, it's uh, We'll see how that turns out. They are going to hopefully make a splash this year. I'm going to try to get see them sometime this year. I've got to make a flip through trip through uh, North Carolina to see them and the Fayetteville Woodpeckers and hopefully pick up the... Uh, the Carolina uh, Mudcats, which I've gone to two games and have not seen the end of either of them. They're the only team I've gone to and left before the end of a game. The biggest story for the Atlantic League is that they have decided to become Major League Baseball's Frankenstein monster. They have agreed to have all these weird rules that people keep trying to push forward for baseball and uh, that don't get adopted in majors and all that. And they're going to do them all this year. I mean, not one or two to see how they work, you know, see if they improve this or that. They're going to do a bunch of rule changes that are going to make the game not so great, probably. Um, first of all, they're going to have non-umpire called strikes and balls, I think. They're going to use this TrackMan radar system. Which, considering that a person between their knees and the, where the uh, letters come across their chest can move up and down depending on where he is in the box and how far he squats down, all this, uh, I'm iffy on this system. And the umpire is part of the game. Trying to remove him out by having one of these stupid systems in place is a bad call. It's just a bad call. No mound visits unless you're going to pull somebody or there's a medical issue. What is that all about? I mean, I get it. If you want to limit mound visits to one every two innings or something like that, or one every three innings, that's okay. I mean, yes, some teams abuse it and go out there all the time, particularly in training leagues that might be a good thing where you're trying to train your pitcher, right? But, um, you know, the Atlantic League is supposed to be high enough that maybe that's not really an issue. So, yeah, limit them to coming out once every two or three innings. But absolutely no visits to the mound? That's going to end up with the catcher stepping two feet out, two feet out in front of the uh, plate and yelling at the pitcher. because he can't, Or walking halfway to the mound and yelling at the pitcher because he can't go up there. Just kind of silly. Uh, pitchers must face a minimum of three batters or reach the end of an inning before they exit the game or they got to be injured. I, this is not the solution. If you want to make a solution to the fact that people are putting pitchers in every half inning after every batter or whatever, which isn't happening near as much as people seem to think it is, uh, you can solve this. By limiting the number of pitchers on the roster. Say that only 10 pitchers can be on a roster. That gives you four starters, maybe five, and then a bullpen that you've got to be careful with, as opposed to, you know, 16 pitchers on a roster, 
or whatever baseball is doing now. Limit the pitchers. Limit the number of pitchers. And then you don't have these games near as much. And sometimes, in important games, this kind of thing can be good. They're increasing the size of the bases in first, second, and third from 15 inches square to 18 inches square. I don't know why they want to do that. I don't see what that does to improve the game. Uh, the only thing I can see maybe is now that you're, you're actually making second baseman step on, the, or shortstops step on second base in order to, you know, get a double play where that had been allowed to slip over the years. And then when TV got good enough that everybody could look and go, whoa, that guy was six inches off the bag. Suddenly, the you know, the guy has to touch the bag again. And, of course, that means he can be taken out. And that's, you know, some issues there. Maybe the thought is that if it's bigger, he can touch the bag and it's harder for the runner to take, to take him out. I don't know. I'm I'm iffy on this one too. It sounds like one of those weird things that somebody just decided they might try. Two infielders have to be on each side of second base when the pitch is released, or else it's a ball automatic ball, dead ball, and called a ball. Okay, sure. I I don't know why you want this rule terribly much. Shifts have gone on in baseball since the beginning of time. I know they've become more popular in more, more recent years. There's never been anything in baseball that says, other than the pitcher, that a player has to be in a particular location. Time between the innings is uh, between half innings and pitch changes uh, reduced from two minutes and five seconds to 145. I actually thought they were three minutes. Maybe in the Atlantic League it was two minutes and five seconds. Uh, I'm not adverse to this. Actually, if they just said that you get a minute between half innings, boy, those the time of those games would come a lot shorter. Of course, there wouldn't be all the silly inter, in, in between inning games. There wouldn't be a whole bunch of people leaving their seats and trying to run for the uh, restrooms and for the concessions, that sort of thing. Uh, but the games would be a lot shorter. This is perhaps the biggest delay that's actually fixable in baseball is to reduce the break between half innings to one minute. Do the same thing when the pitching change happens. Let them have five throws at, at you know, unless somebody injured and they have to come in for that reason. But if nobody's injured, let them have five pitches to home plate and then they got to go. Distance from pitching rubber to home plate extended 24 inches in the second half of the season which is a god-awful easy way to destroy somebody's arms and hurt pitchers. If you do it at the beginning of the season so that people are prepping for it during, before season, so that your spring training has it, so that you know you, this is the way it is, that's one thing. You spend a half a season with your pitchers throwing from the normal place with normal speed, normal distance, and everything, and then you tell them we're moving you two feet back, that's a recipe for hurting your pitchers, and they really should be ashamed of this one. That's the worst of everything here. The others are things that can be annoying, you know, and just kind of silly or stupid. This is really potentially harmful to pitchers, and they really should be ashamed of that one. Uh, and I hope that somebody comes to their senses and says, hey, you know, MLB, I know we've decided to be your Frankenstein monster, but there is a point where it goes too far, and we're going to stop that. Okay, as you might be able to tell, I'm not a huge fan of all this, um, but they're going to try it, and it's going to make life very interesting in the Atlantic League. And that's about it it for this week on you know what we are seeing as we prepare for the starting of the baseball season in the independent leagues and i don't know if there'll be any news next week or until some of the leagues actually start playing games if there is i'll pop up and do another one of these but until then uh go out watch some minor league sports and masalama y'all